Hi guys, it's me, Coach Tony Morgan, and today's video is going to be a different one because we're going to be talking about hints and tips. So today's hints and tips, we're going to be focusing on the Glowworm Betacom 24C. And what the problem is on this boiler, we've got a leak. Um, I'm just going to show you a quick hints and tips of what I did to overcome this problem, just in case you come across it too. So we'll dive in. So this is the front of the boiler. The case has been removed. So to remove the case, you just simply remove the two screws at the bottom and then the whole white panel lifts off and then you get inside here. So obviously you turn the power off, etc. done all that and then you see this. So what we're going to do, look inside the boiler. Before we do that, we're just going to go through the draining procedure. So in Mastering the Basics, if you look on the course, what I'm doing, you'll see I talk about draining the boiler. Now on this side of the boiler, we're looking at the primary water, so that's what we're going to be draining. The boiler location is important because this determines if you need to isolate the boiler. So in this case, we don't need to because it's upstairs. You can see at the back, you've got a drain plug. What I did is just put a container underneath, open that and then allow the water to drain out. So once you do that, then you can see inside the boiler, as I said before. Now what I've done, I've removed the um, actuator motor, as you can see, and now you can see the diverter valve. Now, on this particular unit, this is also on the heat line as well, same type of design, because basically it was from the heat line, and Glowworm actually sort of basically adopted this particular type of design. So, the leak from the center, from that spindle there, that's a common side where to leak from. But in this particular instance, it wasn't leaking from there, it was leaking from the plug on the right hand side there. And it's just dripping down slowly. You can see a bit of marking on the bottom panel there. If you look there, you can see it. That's where it was dripping down. So what I did, I thought, well, you could try and change your diverter valve, which can be expensive time consuming and you know if you got to go away and come back so what I did I took that plug out and then I'll show you what I did next so how I took that plug out I got some grips screwed it out and then obviously this is what you see then basically just got PTFE wrapped it around the thread just like this and then basically just screwed it back in now once you screw it back in You've got to then obviously close your plug, shut that. As I said, we don't need to open the isolation valve, so that's all good. And then we're going to fill up the boiler. Incidentally, before I um, go any further, always um, when you train the boiler, always repressurize the expansion vessel because you want to get make sure there's no trap water in the boiler. So you pump that up to one bar in of air pressure. And then obviously take out the plug and do what I just mentioned. So you fill it up to about this pressure and then you can run the boiler. So we always run it in heating mode first to remove any trapped air in the boiler. So once you do that, then it's just putting it all back together again and that's the end of the job. So you make sure there's um, obviously no leaks. Check it that it's not dripping from the same point there and then away you go so that's basically going to be it on this hints and tips video so hopefully you enjoyed that little short video as i said this is what i'm going to be doing in the future just showing you little sharp snippets straight to the point of what you need to know so that's going to be it from me on this video so if you're looking for my help you can find me at www.masterfulengineer.co.uk and you'll find a lot more information on what I do and on my online training. So that's it from me. Bye for now and I'll see you on the next video.